Right now, this week or at the end of the month, whenever you watch this video is the best time you can possibly start investing. Sounds a bit crazy, but I think it's true and it has nothing to do with how high the stock market is, but let me explain. Firstly, put everything to one side for a second and just step back. Investing now is the easiest it's ever been in history. I mean, just think about this. I'm 35 years old, getting my first grey hairs, and in my investing lifetime alone, so much has changed. Before the internet came along to invest in the stock market, you would either have to physically go and visit a stockbroker, or at best, call them up on the phone to place an order. And to make things even worse, they charge you a fortune just to be able to do it. So unless you had loads of money, it was almost not even worth it. And let's not forget that all of your research would have been needed to be done beforehand. You would have had to get a newspaper or a finance magazine to see the most recent pricing on the stocks that you were actually interested in. And if you were really interested in finance, you might even have to go down and visit your local library to see if they had any of those fancier subscriptions that you couldn't afford to get into the real details. Either way, you'd have to do some serious work and pay some serious fees. I was just reading on one forum from many years ago that people were being charged more than £100 to place an order and they had to buy at least 100 shares of a company. Then, to make things even worse, not only would you be charged those high fees to buy your stocks, but you'd have the same issues on the way out when you wanted to sell. Everything was slow and you'd even have to wait for your paper certificate in the mail, which would take a few days, and need to be given back once you sold your shares. Now, I'm sure some people in the comments will remember those days. Just think, right now, it could not be easier to invest. You can pick up your phone, download an investing platform, create an account and invest for as little as £1 in about as much time as it takes to make a cup of tea. Just on that note, I do keep links to the apps and the platforms that I use in the description below. Make sure to use those if you want to get some free shares or free cash to get yourself started. Now, that certainly beats phoning someone up, getting charged for it and having to wait around for some paper certificate to arrive, doesn't it? Leading on from that point and sticking with one of the things I just mentioned, it is cheaper than ever before to invest. Let me show you why keeping your costs low as an investor is probably one of the most important things that you can do. So if I get the last five years return in total for the S&P 500, which is a really good benchmark we can use, we get a 95% return. Now on a compounded annual basis, this works out to be the equivalent of making 14.29% on your money every single year for five years in a row. This is a really, really good return by any measure. But here's the key thing that you should focus on now. How much of that 14.29% can you get as an investor? Well, the truth is that the best you can ever get has to include all of the fees that you pay as well. So you need to take that 14.29%, add up all of the fees, which could include platform fees, trading fees, exchange fees, you name it. And then you need to remove them from the total return. For example, let's just say that in total, your fees add up to be 1% a year to keep things simple. So that instead of 14.29% a year, you got 13.29% a year. How much impact would that have on a £10,000 investment from five years ago? Well, let's take a look. So with no fees at all, nice and simple math here, £10,000 would become £19,500 over five years, which is almost a 100% return, a profit of £9,500. Now, if you only got 13.29% a year because you had lots of fees to pay and those fees added up to about 1% a year, you will end up with £18,661. So that's almost £1,000 less profit, which works out to be nearly 10% less in total over that five year period. I bet you wouldn't have expected it to be that low for just 1%, but this just shows how important it is to keep your fees low because 1% a year, when left to compound, over the years can have a massive impact on what you end up with. And just think about this, although I won't spend any more time on more examples, can you imagine what happens when you have a really big investing portfolio and you do the same thing for 20 or 30 years? Yeah, it's not that pretty, so keep your costs low. I hope that by seeing this point so clearly, you now really start to focus on your costs. And if you're already invested, just make sure you're not being ripped off. On that point, here's something really interesting that should show you just how good a time it is to start investing now. Here on screen is a graph showing how much costs have come down for investors over the past few decades. You've got four lines here in total showing the annual cost to invest in the average investing fund and the average bond fund from both active managers and passive index funds. As you can see, in 1996, the average annual fee charged by an actively managed fund was more than 1% per year. And then the average active bond fund was also close second at more than 0.8% a year. 
Can you imagine how much money these active fund managers were making? No wonder they were all going around in Lamborghinis or whatever. You just had to think when you add up all of that money that people were charging anyway. Now, have a quick look at the passive index funds, which were a lot lower, but still had costs of 0.27%. Now, fast forward to 2021 when this graph finishes and just check out how much things have changed today. Active funds are now down to an average of 0.68%, which I still think is a lot of money, but then you are welcome to pick and choose whatever investments you want to do with your money. Then secondly, and even more impressive, I think, is that passive index funds have an average cost of just 0.06% a year. Bear in mind, this is US data, so they pay even less than we do, which is quite incredible, really, for that scale. For some perspective, if you had £10,000 invested with a 0.06% cost, this comes out to just £6 per year, which means so much more in your pocket. In the future, will we see even cheaper costs? Maybe, but now has got to be the best time to get invested than we've ever seen before when you think about just how low the fees are. My next point is that there is now more choice than ever before. There are tens of thousands of stocks you can choose from, thousands of funds and everything in between. You name it, you can invest in it now. Whereas in the past, you were either locked out because you didn't have enough money or the choice just didn't even exist yet. I think the best example is this one. If you wind the clock back just 30 years, something like an exchange traded fund didn't even exist. If you've not come across ETFs, these are just collections of stocks that have all been put together inside one investment that is bought and sold on the stock market. For example, I think one of the most popular ones and oldest ones goes by the name of SPY over in the US, and this ETF just tracks the S&P 500 stock market index. What this means is that if you buy one share of SPY, you will effectively own a very small part of all of the companies in the S&P 500. Before ETFs were around, you would have had to use a mutual fund, which are typically a lot more expensive to get into. Now, ETFs, which are almost like a staple now for investors, were only just getting started over in the US 30 years ago. And Vanguard, who is one of the biggest investing names in the world, only bought out their first ETF in 2001. Think about that for a moment. All of these investments that we now take for granted have only been around at best for a couple of decades. And for the biggest part of their history, I think it's fair to say that Things like ETFs have only gotten really popular over the last decade or so. If you were an investor starting out 20 or 30 years ago, the entire investing world would have been so much harder to navigate. You can easily see why so many people never bothered to start investing in the first place. And it's only been over the last decade or so, like I said, that it's been made so much easier to do so. As a quick side note, I did a video earlier this year, which is really popular going through some of the best ETFs that you can invest in. I'll try and leave that one in the description below if I remember. Otherwise, I'll leave it at the end of the video. Certainly worth checking out if you're looking for some ideas and maybe a place to start. But just count yourself lucky for a second. If you get to start investing today, you have so many more choices than ever before, and it really could not be much easier. The next point why I think right now is the best time to start getting invested is you can't invest in the past. This might sound obvious, but hear me out for a second. It's no good looking back at the stock market chart thinking, well, I missed out back then and there's no way the future's going to be any better than it was, or saying something like, the stock market is just too high right now, there has to be a crash and I'll just wait until that happens. Firstly, none of us know what will happen in the future. And secondly, there will always be something to worry about or someone calling for some end of the world market crash. You can go back every single year through the financial news and you will find plenty of bearish arguments from very smart sounding people. In fact, the scarier the headline, the better because more of you end up reading it. It's not your fault, it's just that you're wired that way. And unfortunately, as humans, we are programmed to avoid risk and look out for bad things, even if they never end up happening. Just think of this for a second. Take the chart of the S&P 500 and imagine that you're an investor at some point in the past. Just pick anyone, to be honest. Or better yet, pick a point in the past where the market is at an all-time high relative to the past and then just remove the rest of the chart from your view. There would have been so many people at points like these thinking, well, there's no point investing now. The market is too high. I've completely missed the boat. Forget about it. I bet there were so many people out there like this, and now they all look back and wish they'd started sooner. That is one thing that almost every investor you meet will tell you. They wish they'd started sooner. Because if you are able to invest regularly over very long periods of time, you put yourself in a great position to benefit from the amazing wonder that is compound growth. Also, as a second point on this, say you were to invest just before a big market crash. Let's just say that you had the worst luck possible and you made your first investment right here. You can pick any of the major crashes, to be honest, as it doesn't really matter what they are in this example. If you are a long-term investor, 
and you want to regularly invest every month or just every time you get paid and you make your first investment, let's say it's £100 for the sake of the argument. Will it matter in 10 or 20 years that you made your first investment right at the top of the stock market? The only answer here is no. It doesn't matter one bit. This is because if you invest regularly and make sure that you stick to this plan, you will end up buying at the highs and the lows. Sometimes you'll hit it right at the bottom and sometimes you'll hit it right at the top. But if you make sure that you regularly invest month in, month out, through the good times and the bad times, which is the most important thing, you'll end up with an average price. Now, that average price will end up helping you get through the ups and downs as the longer you invest, the greater your chances become of making money. It's something that's worked if we test it out over the last century, and I'd bet that this is something that continues to work for the next one as well. Obviously, there are no guarantees, and with investing, we have no idea what will happen. But this is just another reason why I wouldn't try and time the market and pretend that I know when the tops are. I'd rather just get myself started because there is no time better than today to get that first investment made. After all, you can't go back in the past. Now, final point on this video, let me first just share something really interesting for all of you who've made it this far. Here in the UK, there are about 50 million adults in the population. And of those people, here's how many actually have investing accounts. For reference, this is the stocks and shares ISA. And looking at the latest data, there were just under 4 million adults who actually subscribed to one. For some comparison as well, people with a cash ISA account made up a total of just over 7 million. Now, work that out as a percentage, and we can see that here in the UK, less than 8% of all adults even have a stocks and shares ISA. That means that 92% of adults in the UK that you see every single day aren't even using an investing account. And not only that, they aren't using one of the single most powerful tools to grow their wealth. Now, this point on its own could be a whole video about financial education in the UK and how much more of us need to make sure that we help spread the message out there. And obviously, I completely agree. I wish we were all taught this earlier, but we are where we are and we can't go backwards. So all we can do now is focus on right now. The point I really wanted to make here was that in order to make your money work for you, you have to do something with your money. Clearly, in the UK, many people are good at saving, and this is obvious when you see just how many cash ISA accounts there are. People understand that it's good to save money, and even better when you get paid interest on it as well. Right now, at least, interest rates in savings accounts are better than they have been for decades, and you can easily find ones with over 5% interest. For me personally, I use the feature in my Trading212 account to get my interest, which is paid daily, at 5.2% per year. Now, this is all fine and good, but over the long run, you have to take inflation into account. If you only ever save your whole life and never invest, you're very likely to end up with a lot less money. This is because saving carries very little risk, therefore the rewards reflect that. But in the long run, if you can put up with the ups and downs of the market and really focus for 5, 10, 20 or even 30 years, the past shows us what could be possible. With investing, we're likely to see the greatest returns when compared to inflation, meaning that we can grow our wealth and give ourselves a lot more options in the future. For example, here's a chart that I pull out all the time showing long-term returns of different kinds of things that you can do with your money. As you can see, stocks, or as they're sometimes called equities, are the ones that continue to deliver returns for investors. But they also carry risk too, don't forget that. However, whatever you do, please just do something, and I hope that this final point shows you just how important it is to do it. Now, leading on from this, if you need to find the best investing account to open, here is a comparison of the best Socks and Shares ISA accounts for this year. Or if you've already got one, here's a really popular video taking you through some of my favorite index funds to get yourself started. I'll see you over there, and as always, happy investing.